10th place, 68 points, uh, appearance in the FA Cup first round. If Scott Davis was told that's how it would end after Tombridge Angels, how delighted would he have been in the end? Yeah, I probably wouldn't have believed it. Um, really did struggle after that game, like I alluded to in my sort of speech out there on the pitch at the end of season awards. Um, I did try and jack it in that day, um, not from a personal point of view where um, I didn't want to make it all about me and just keep turning up and losing matches and thinking it was acceptable because um, I knew that it wasn't. Um, but I had a lot of good people that evening that I spoke to um, that believed in me, I guess, um, as a young manager. Um, and fortunately, as a team, we came through the other side. Um, we went 10 unbeaten after that game, which was an incredible achievement. Um, but I did struggle, of course I did. I remember walking off the pitch at home to Tunbridge, um, looking at the fans, thinking, all eyes on me, people are questioning me. They think that I'm not good enough or um, I don't know what I'm doing and this, that and the other. Every sort of different permutation went through my head, um, but thanks to the lads, they they able to, they were able to turn it around um, and make it a brilliant season. I think tenth place is an incredible achievement um, for a club like ours. I think that's a joint effort from every single person that's sort of made um, an effort this season or um, supported us. Whether it's the board, um, whether it's the players, um, the staff, the volunteers, it's been a it's been a one club effort um, and one that I'm extremely proud of. Just before then, I ask you about the game that, that was played today, and we did have that announcement just before kickoff regarding the stadium lease that we've secured for 50 years for Slough. Um, what are your thoughts, just again, on that? Incredible. I know the work that's gone into it. Um, Ash is obviously at the forefront of all of that. Um, I know how hard he works. Um, he's someone that I've known for a long time before he joined the football club um, as the owner. Um, he's become a good friend of mine and someone that I can trust wholeheartedly. Um, we speak probably 10, 15 times a day and I know that it was pivotal in terms of us hopefully turning the corner and moving forward um, and hopefully progressing. I think that's the most important thing. I think we've made progress this year from what we were last season when I first took over um, and hopefully we can progress again. Um, but we know that expectation is probably going to rise um, and next season is going to be the hard one. There's no doubt about it. I think this season we probably superseded expectation. Um, certainly from my point of view, I think I would have been happy to finish 17th, 17th 18th at the beginning of the season, uh, maybe had a game or two in the FA Cup. Um, but thanks to the lads that have walked over that line um, and represented the club, like I couldn't be more grateful to what they've given me. Um, an incredible set of people, incredible set of players, um, joined along with the staff as well that have been so supportive in Yella, Chrissy and Winesy, uh, Chico, Mark Hunter. Um, and people like yourself, Con, I know you won't give yourself credit, but you've been an absolute diamond to work with this season, and I genuinely mean that. So it's a special place to be, it really is. Um, and hopefully now we can look to the future, um, having secured the ground, um, and hopefully the, the future looks promising. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to next season already. So final game of the season then, finished in a one-all draw with Welling United. Of course, you spoke about your good friendship with uh, the other manager, Rob Stringer. Um, what are your thoughts on the, end of the, on the game to end the season? Yeah, we should have been four or five nil up at half time, I think. Um, I think Rob would have probably said that was fair. I thought the first 45 minutes, it was similar to a bath where we managed to find the back of the net four times. Um, today, we could have done it quite comfortably as well, um, but we didn't manage to do it. I thought their keeper was absolutely brilliant. I'll give him massive credit. And in the second half, they changed their shape tactically um, and it worked well for them. Uh, we stuck to what we were doing in terms of our shape. Um, and I think deservedly, in the end, we got a, a goal that meant that we left with a draw. Um, if we'd have left having been beaten today and lost our unbeaten record, I, that would have really hurt me. Um, I know we're off to Dublin tonight. I probably would have jacked Dublin in and not gone. Um, I would have been sulking, but I thought the performance was really good. It could have been an end of season, take your foot off the gas. Um, but it's probably the best we've played in 45 minutes for a number of months. Um, just couldn't manage to get the ball past the keeper, who, like I said, was brilliant. Um, so many good performances incredible crowd I think it was 1849 was it um, that's what we could have only have dreamt of I remember Taunton on Tuesday night when I took over I think it was Taunton or Concord it was 399 Concord. Um, yeah and I remember it, it sticks uh, in my memory and um, I remember thinking this club is only going one way but so many people to thank um, that have managed to sort of turn it around and, and make it a great place to be and, and one that I only dream of at times that I'm manager of the football club and feel extremely proud to be able to sort of steer the ship on the pitch um, and pick the team and things like that. So, yeah, I'm forever grateful for everyone that's played their part. And we saw also Johnny Goddard score his 19th goal of the season to get that equaliser from the spot. Um, just on your 
end of season awards that you also said that you didn't want him to have all the awards because as we've seen he's got plenty yeah. of them now uh, he gave it to Dan Bayliss uh, but Johnny Goddard you mentioned that he probably would have been deserving of it had it not been yeah. receiving all the others Dan Bayliss came second in players player so I thought it was like just reward for um, Johnny winning all the other awards it's it's not a one man team and Johnny would be the first to say that we've scored what 90 odd goals probably with the FA Cup maybe more um, Johnny's obviously got 19 but there's another 70 goals that have been scored elsewhere um, I think he's had an incredible season like, there's no hiding from that um, he's been absolutely brilliant um, and it could have been easy to give it to him um, but also you've got to look at people like Dan Bayliss that have come up the ladder um, they've played it this season for the first time and I think he's got better and better every game and I think when he's not played we've missed him um, he's been brilliant in the change room he looks after the fines he's first at training he's first at the matches every single week he's the first one to commit for next season um, so there's a few different sort of reasons as to why we gave it to him I don't want to name another person because there was genuinely five or six that I could have given it to and it's been a real pain all week to try and decide who to give it to um, and I knew that I probably upset a couple of people um, who may be disappointed not to get it if Johnny didn't get it um, but it was that difficult it really was um, I sat there and spoke to my wife and I said I don't want to give out this award um, because it is the most deci difficult decision I've made all year but I felt like Dan was just deserving of it um, and that was sort of backed up by coming second in player as player um, so it kind of justifies things. So just to kind of finish this off then because it's an awkward one isn't it it's the last game of the season so it's, there's not really anything to look forward to just yet but I'll try and see if I can squeeze any information out of you looking forward now to next season do you feel you you know now the areas you want to look at in terms of in the summer and moving forward what you yeah. feel to get us to the playoffs next year yeah so we've already got a three uh, another three lads that have committed for next season but they won't be on contract so we won't announce it um one of them sort of up in the air at the moment. Uh, we've had a couple of conversations that has been on a contract and we need to try and renew it or whatnot. But some of the lads have had a really good season. They want to see if there's a possibility to go full time, which I absolutely love. It shows to me that they're hungry. They've got the desire to want to kick on. If that doesn't happen, they've promised me that they'll be at the football club. Um, if they're playing in the Conference South, they don't want to go anywhere else. Um, but yeah, no, I think for us, we've got a good number of players that will be here again next season. Uh, we've got conversations and meetings to have. Um, with the whole squad, I think, in about 10 days' time. Um, so we look forward to those. Um, but yeah, for now, for the next sort of week, obviously it sort of dies down a little bit um, for everyone else. And I know for me, it will just go hectic. This is probably the busiest time of the season. Um, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I love being able to give the ch uh, being able to have given the chance to do what I do. I um, feel extremely grateful. So I, um, yeah, I was going to say, I, I sort of lap it up, if you know what I mean, and enjoy it for what it is. Um, and uh, yeah, try and make the best that I can do for the club. Um, we've got areas that we want to look at where we feel like we need to improve. Um, and we'll try and do that uh, between the coaching team. We'll put our heads together. Uh, we're going to have dinner next week to discuss what we feel like we need. So um, yeah, it doesn't stop. For the players, they deserve a break. They've played, I think, 55 games now after today. Uh, 56 if you include Flatwell, but I won't include that one. Um, but yeah, no, I'm so, so proud of everyone. Um, huge, huge thanks to... Um, I don't like calling them my players and my staff because it sounds like I'm above them and I'm certainly not. We're all in it together. But the players and staff, massive, massive thanks to all of those. The supporters that have travelled around the country. Um, my parents have been at every single game. Um, I think my wife as well. The sort of times that I frustrated her having to pick up phone call after phone call. Um, hopefully for a week or two now it might die down a little bit, but I know it'll pick up. So, yeah, forever grateful, um, Colin. And I can only say that on words. Um, but I wish I could actually describe it, um, really what it does mean to to sort of all the help that I get. Um, because, yeah, it's certainly, it's not about one person, it's football club or one player. It's a, it's a joint effort to make this club um, as brilliant as it's been this year. Thank you for your time, Scott, for your interviews as well across the entire season. Um, it's, it's honestly really great for me to be able to speak to you throughout the year. And like I said earlier on, the, on Twitter too, you mentioned about the fact that, you know, it's my first time doing this and it's been really appreciative to have you sort of always just kind of put up with me and uh, hopefully next season we can keep carrying on doing 100%, this. 100% Con, I think you've been brilliant mate. I think um, from my point of view as well, like there's so many people that sort of go behind the scenes at this club with the volunteers and yourself and you've taken it like a duck to water mate. So thanks ever so much and fingers crossed next year we can do some more. Yeah, look forward to next season. Cheers mate. Thank you.